which is really creating shockwaves and raising very serious questions about how our medicines are certified by whom and what the process is. So here's what happened. The WHO has issued an alert over Indian-made cough syrups, four of them that are being linked to the deaths of 66 children in the African country of Gambia. India has issued an official statement saying that these killer cough syrups are not sold or manufactured in India, but the fact is that they are licensed from here. The health ministry has added that the WHO has yet to share an analysis certificate of the syrup with them or show the link between these deaths and these cough syrups. WHO chief Dr. Tedro said that the four cold and cough syrups in question have been potentially linked with acute kidney injuries and 66 deaths among children. WHO has today issued a medical product alert for four contaminated medicines identified in the Gambia that have been potentially linked with acute kidney injuries and 66 deaths among children. The loss of these young lives is beyond heartbreaking for their families. The four medicines are cough and cold syrups produced by Maiden Pharmaceuticals Limited in India. WHO is conducting further investigation with the company and regulatory authorities in India. While the contaminated products have so far only been detected in the Gambia, they may have been distributed to other countries. और मैंने प्रातः उठते ही अपने ड्रग कंट्रोल को कहा कि जाकर इसकी कार्रवाई करें और केंद्र सरकार के अधिकारी भी इसकी पूरी जानकारी ले रहे हैं केंद्र सरकार के हेल्थ सेक्ट्री और पार्मासिटिकल सेक्ट्री ने आज प्रातः ही हमारे जो हेल्थ सेक्ट्री हैं उससे बात की है और ये निर्णय तय हुआ है कि पहले कोई कार्रवाई करने से पहले इसके हम सैंपल चेक करवा दें तो इसके सैंपल लेके जो सेंट्रल ड्रग लेबोरेटरी है कैलकटा में वहां पर सैंपल भेजे गए हैं वहां से रिपोर्ट आने के बाद अगर कोई चीज गलत हुई तो बहुत सख्त कार्रवाई करी जाएगी while the investigative agencies will definitely look into the severity of the medical condition with which these children were suffering, we, Indian Academy of Pediatrics, strongly feel that the safety and quality standards of the drugs can never be compromised, and we offer our complete assistance to the drug licensing authorities in India in this regard. To understand how important and serious this whole case is. I'm joined by um, an expert who knows the ins and outs of the licensing process as well. Murli Neil Kantan, former Global General Counsel at Cipla and Glenmark, joining us on the show today. Murli, thank you so much for speaking with us on Beyond the Headline, because I think it's very crucial to understand why this company could actually export something which could be allegedly killing children to the nation of Gambia? We shouldn't be surprised because we've had cough syrups killing children in India. So why would you think that we'd be exporting anything different? Uh, on your channel, we've had this discussion a few years ago when children yeah. died of taking cough syrup manufactured in Himachal, in Baddi. So uh, we have uh, lots of supposedly termed medicines that are in killing in India and nothing much has been done about it. So you should not be surprised. Well, I am surprised, honestly. I'm surprised, shocked, and dismayed. Um, what is this component which is allegedly in the cough syrup and why and how would it get in there? Is this negligence? Is this criminal intent? Is this an attempt at cost cutting? Just contextualize it for us. So, uh, we don't know enough because we haven't seen the test reports, but we think it's something yeah. called DEG. Uh, and it's the same DEG that we found in the cough syrup that killed uh, Indian kids uh, three years ago. So clearly, you know, it's not, a, it's not something new that has just happened. Uh, 
it's been introduced willfully. So it's not something that accidentally gets into the process. It's different from what happened with ranitidine, if you remember, where they found some carcinogenic uh, impurities in that quite popular uh, drug that is taken by lots of people for acidity. So in that case, it was slightly different. It was that the impurity arose because of something in the raw material which was not picked up at an early stage uh, while looking at the quality control on the raw materials coming into the factory. So that was a slightly different issue. This is a well-known dangerous ingredient in the cough syrup. So there's really no excuse to have it there. You can't say, I didn't know, I could not have known. This is well known, it has happened before, and therefore it should be quite easily preventable. Explain to me the role of the CDSCO. What is the role well, of the CDSCO? Is this on us in terms of um, the Indian system of giving clearances for drugs? Or is this on you know, similar bodies in the nation of Gambia? Or is this on so, the WHO? Who is supposed uh, to give these clearances? So uh, the WHO actually is not like the US FDA, which can go around regulating suppliers. It cannot do that. It sets standards. It helps countries understand what the guidelines are. So the standard really has to be whatever is produced in India has to fit the CDSCO standard. Now, CDSCO in this case will say, we had nothing to do with it because it was not a product sold in the Indian market. Okay, so who gave them a license? Ah, the states, each of the states has a drug regulator which can issue licenses to manufacture. Fantastic. But they still have a standard. And a good manufacturing practice standard exists in the law. So even for this company to have got a manufacturing license would have to establish at least paperwork to say that this is the process we're following and this is what we're producing. Yeah. And that is what the WHO will rely on to say, here is paperwork given to an Indian regulator. The Indian regulator has provided a manufacturing license. We accept that these regulations are good regulations. We assume that the Indian regulator will be checking and ensuring that there is compliance with this. And therefore, we think it is good enough to go to Gambia. So for a lot of the countries that are not as developed as the Western world, they will rely on the Indian regulator to do its job, the WHO to provide guidance, and the manufacturer in this case to be compliant. So everything works on good faith, basically. And that's where they assume that this is a good product manufactured using a good process in a country with good regulation comes to Gambia. Gambia will not then test the product and every batch of that product mm. because it just assumes you know, that all of this has you, been done. There. You know what I found shocking? What I found shocking when I was reading on the latest news on this is that Gambia doesn't even have a lab in the country to check what exact contaminants are in this cough syrup which has killed 66 kids below the age of five. They have to Correct. send it outside the country to check it. Exactly. And this, we'll yeah. have to so wait and assuming... see what the details are. But it's, it smacks of a pharmaceutical company pushing substandard wares to a poorer nation who has yes. no choice. But also in India. So if, assuming this happened in India, uh, there is no testing done. So if this product had come into the market and killed 66 Indian kids, there's nothing you could have stopped for, uh, nothing you could have done to stop that from happening. Because so are you saying, one minute, one minute, are you saying we have no system? So if I go over the counter and I buy a cough syrup or I buy XYZ um, medicine, I'm assuming yeah. it's been certified by somebody that has tested that it's safe. No. No. So the regulations say that you must have an internal process to test it. But we know that most of these companies have no process. They just make up record. There is no quality control. You can't find a batch record for many of these companies. It's a copy paste that is just made up. So paperwork is just made up. There is no quality control. If there was, this could never have happened. So 
the reality is that there is nobody actually saying each batch has to be certified by an independent lab. We're saying the company needs to certify that it meets the standard. And therefore, you can fudge all those records. And most of these records are all fudged. So there is no way of actually knowing for certain what's in any of these products. And we've got plenty of evidence from India to say that they don't contain what they say they do. You know, I want you to stay on with me, Murli. We actually visited the company's corporate office in Haryana. Mm. The office is closed. The official website has now been pulled down. I want to play out that report. A Haryana-based manufacturer of cough syrup is now under the scanner for the death of 66 children in an African country. WHO had alerted Indian authorities about the same and now a probe has been launched into it. This is a company that I'm talking about. This is Maiden Pharmaceuticals Limited. This is the corporate office in the national capital here in Pitampura. Name of the company is Maiden Pharmaceuticals Limited and since these allegations have been leveled, this company has gone incommunicado and the allegations by WHO. Uh, as you can see, their doors are locked. People around this area told us that this has been locked since the allegations were rigged up and the alert note was issued to the Indian authorities by the WHO. Not just this, directors are silent and also the official websites of uh, Maiden Pharmaceutical Limited is uh, it has been pulled down. Now, if we talk about this company, this was founded in 1990. It has four directors. They all are silent. Uh, it came into export business 10 years after it was founded, that is in 2000. And the main allegation against this company is that four of its products against fever, cold and cough which was being imported to an African country had contaminants due to which 66 children had died and in fact it had contaminants that, that had toxic effects and was lethal and that is why WHO is of the view that this is the reason that those children have died in that African country. Murli, so I want to understand from the consumer's point of view, first of all, in terms of morality, this is shocking that a pharma company would palm off maybe substandard stuff to a poor nation who has no choice, 66 children have died. But from a consumer point of view, because you've just revealed that there is no system of independent testing, you go by or the authorities go by what the pharma companies claim. How do you protect yourself? What's the best bet to stick to well-known brands? Uh, yes, you could do that. The challenge there is that there is a lot of uh, spurious stuff in the well-known brands as well, because the most expensive and well-known brand is the one that you will have the most counterfeits for. So that's a yeah. different thing altogether. But let me just say this, uh, that what you're seeing now in Gambia, if it is true, you're going to hear from a few more countries as well. In a lot of these countries, the products go very easily across borders. So yeah. what do you sell in one will quickly go across to the others. The second thing about Indian products is you open any day's newspaper, you will find some Indian company recalling some product from the US market. It's not unusual. Take any day's exactly. newspaper. Yeah. How many can you find for the Indian market? When was the last time you heard about a recall in an Indian market? So if it is not good enough for the US market, you recall it. How is it that it has always been excellent for the Indian market and nothing has ever been recalled? Doesn't it say something who, about who your business? Who are the regulators? Who are the regulators who need to fix it? And you're absolutely right. Every few days you hear that the US FDA had a surprise visit to XYZ's facility and some of the biggest names, and they are to recall a batch. They are sending people to check wherever the product is being manufactured to ensure that US citizens get the best. Your yes. question is very valid. What are we doing? Are those products uh, great for us? So who, who are the bodies that are supposed to do these checks? So the state regulator, drug regulator, is supposed to do these checks. The reality is the drug regulator has no interest in it. And let me just say this to you. Thousands of people have died because of these kind of drugs. But in the last 60 years, so I've checked from 1963, and I didn't have much time for this. No one has gone to jail ever in India for any drug 
that is spurious or adulterated or counterfeit. What does that tell you? That's they've shocking. Gone, they've gone to jail for check bounce cases. They've gone to jail for everything else. But no one's ever gone to jail because the product killed a patient. Ever. In 63 years. 60 years. The law says if someone dies because of a spurious or adulterated drug, the punishment is 10 years to life imprisonment. And yet, I couldn't find one example, one in 60 years, of anyone who's been punished for a spurious or a counterfeit drug or an adulterated drug. Completely shocking. Completely shocking. We need to wake up and smell the coffee. And right now, we need a very strong statement from Indian authorities, not asking where is the proof that our cough syrup has killed these children, but really introspecting and <laughs> ensuring there is no repeat. I want to thank you, Murli, for taking out the time and speaking with us so frankly. Um, top expert in this field explaining how this may have happened. We'll take